Hey everyone, it's Neo once again from the Overtracker. And well, here we are with the GeForce RTX 5080 launch, specifically the ASUS Prime GeForce RTX 5080, one of the more affordable models in the entire lineup. However, before you think of asking me about the price, well, just don't. I don't know how much this card costs because I had no store listings when I wrote this review. However, it will be more than the 999 USD price in various states and by my estimates locally likely to be between 25 and 29 grand. As this is the second most basic model in the lineup, it has a more simplistic design and obviously is smaller than the others but should offer nearly identical performance. Speaking of which, I was dealing with some serious time constraints when it came to this review. So that's why I'll be skipping a lot of the extra stuff and all the other fluff. So the Prime card does not have any of the fancy engineering that goes into the more premium models. It just runs cool and as far as noise goes, well, there simply isn't any. In fact, it was actually quieter than the ROG Strix RTX 4080 I used to compare it against. This is despite being the smaller of the two cards at just two and a half slots. So if you want to know how long it is, it's about 35 centimeters long, about 11.3 centimeters in depth and about 50 centimeters in thickness and for a total weight of 1.27 kilograms. Either way, in case you missed the CES presentation and all the information surrounding the RTX 50 series, this is the second most powerful GPU in the lineup for now. Its specs are exactly half of the 5090. It has 10,752 CUDA cores, a 256-bit wide bus, 16 gigabytes of 30 gigabits per second GDDR7 memory, and of course, it's built on the NVIDIA Blackwell architecture. Essentially, it has 10% more of everything compared to the 4080. So that's compute cores, render outputs, texture samplers, tensor cores, RT cores, etc. What is significantly increased, however, is the memory bandwidth, courtesy of the GDDR7 memory. The big thing with this GPU, I think, are its AI capabilities and the new DLSS4 transformer model and all those things that it brings with it. Either way, all that is for another day because right now we're just going to focus on the raw numbers and performance. So, testing was done on the AMD Ryzen 9 9950X, the ROG Strix B850F gaming Wi-Fi motherboard, Corsair's Vengeance DDR5 RGB memory, all of which is powered by the 1600W XPG Fusion ATX 3.0 PSU. First up, we have 3D Mark. Here we can see the 5080 is anywhere between 14 to 22% faster than the RTX 4080. It seems as if the newer tests that are more compute heavy favor the 5080. However, that could be a matter of the sheer bandwidth advantage of the 5080. I'll talk about overclocking in a follow up video. But from the default clock speed, I was able through GPU Tweak 3 increase the memory speed to 34 gigabits per second or 17 gigahertz, if you will. Even higher is actually possible. However, I think the Prime card, when it's overclocked, is going to offer about 29% faster performance in these tests. Next up is Unigen Superposition. This benchmark is old by now, but my gosh, it still looks good. Here, the 5080 is 21% faster and obviously even more so when overclocked. Next up, we have the Compute Benchmarks, and the first of this is the Geekbench AI test using the Direct ML API, where the 5080 can be as much as 17% faster for half precision, but just 2% faster than the RTX 4080 in single precision. We then have the AI Text Generation Benchmarks from the UL Procyon Suite. The 5080 is faster here in all the tests, but again, the margins vary between the language models. Please keep in mind that I used the public and current builds of these tests and not the ones that NVIDIA recommended which show even larger gains in favor of the RTX 5080. In the Topaz Video AI benchmark for some reason, the RTX 4080 came out ahead. I have no doubt that this will change with an update to the application, but it is worth noting that some apps that are not aware of or capable of addressing the Blackwell GPUs correctly, at present at least, can lead to lower than expected performance. Fortunately, V-Ray 6 suffered no such anomalies and it showed via the RTX render path the 5080 is 21% faster than the 4080. In GPU Pi 3.3, using the CUDA path, we can see that the 5080 is about 11% faster than the 4080. Not bad and perhaps in line with the differences highlighted in the hardware before and not the architectural advantages of Blackwell. Finally, we get to the gaming test. I didn't use any of the NVIDIA RTX 50 specific builds of any game, but just the publicly available ones today. That being said, updates are sure to follow, but as a baseline, games like Hitman show the RTX 5080 is anywhere between 10 to 15% faster than the 4080. The higher the resolution, the bigger the difference, and this is somewhat in line with the memory bandwidth differences. 
In Forza Horizon 5, with the highest possible settings applied, we see the 5080 has a roughly 16 and sometimes 17% advantage over the 480. This is without the use of DLSS but 4X MSAA. With DLSS enabled, the numbers would likely be a little bit different. In Cyberpunk 2077, using the latest 2.21 patch, which supports the new Transformer model, the 5080 is about 9 to 14% faster than the 4080. When you turn on the 4X frame generation, however, the 5080 doubles its frame rate across the board, offering staggering performance. I played with this frame generation mode enabled a little bit. While it does look impressive, the image quality isn't always perfect, but it is something to behold, and I can only imagine further updates will improve it. For a start, however, I think it looks incredible. The next one is Dragon Age The Veil Guard. The 5080 advantages here can be as little as 5% or as much as 15%. Assassin's Creed Mirage, on the other hand, showed some odd performance at 4K with the RTX 4080 actually being ahead. I'll not read too much into this, but it was curious either way. As a result, I'd not put too much faith in these numbers as an update should follow that would change these and allow the 5080 to pull ahead. We then have Black Myth Wukong, another one that gave me some odd numbers that I had to rerun multiple times but I couldn't make sense of. The 5080 here is significantly faster than the 4080 by a margin that should be and I would say is impossible. Anywhere from between 44 to 90% faster. As much as it is with Assassin's Creed, I suspect the results are wrong, but they are what I recorded and that's what I'm showing you. Last, we have Red Dead Redemption 2, set to max quality, which can be challenging even today for this class of GPU. The 5080 here can be anywhere between 10% and 34% faster than the 4080. Nothing we've not seen thus far. And well, that's it for the ASUS Prime GeForce RTX 5080. This is a short review and a GPU that I will definitely make a follow-up video on. But for now, I hope I've given you a general understanding of what this card offers today in terms of pure performance. The 4080 and 4080 Super owners may be compelled by the new DLSS 4 frame generation multiplier, but other than that, I do understand if they want to stick with their present cards. Power consumption wise and temp wise, the Prime card isn't bad at all, consuming a bit less power than the ROG Strix GeForce RTX 4080, even if it's just by a little bit. That being said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below, but until the next time, take care of yourselves and peace.